The smartphone market is a revolving door of new models, each one claiming to be best ever. The new Moto G54 5G represents roughly the middle-ish of Motorola G-series lineup, and this phone actually has a great case to be the best value in the entire lineup. In this video I'm going to show you everything you want to know about the Moto G54. We will explore the phone delving into its features, testing cameras and its gaming performance. Also we will discuss the battery and we will try to find the answer for the simple question, is it worth the money? Stay with me if you want to find out. But before we dive in, let's check out what's in the box. Inside an eco-style box, which is kind of trendy these days, especially for high-end products, we have the phone itself wrapped in eco-paper wrapping. Let's take it out, but we'll discuss its design in a minute. Also in the box is a quick start guide, a SIM card ejector, safety certification and a 20 watt charging brick with a dedicated USB-C to USB-A cable. And that's all you need to get started with a phone. The new G54 looks like a Motorola phone. It's plastic but it's sturdy and feels good in the hand. The phone is slim and also fairly lightweight, coming in at just 192 grams and comes in four colors. This one is indigo blue. There are also midnight blue, glacier blue and mint green. All colors giving the phone, I would say, elegant look. The IP68 dustproof and splashproof rating is a nice bonus too. At the back there's a camera module, we'll test the cameras later in this video. At the bottom of the phone you'll find a Type-C port for charging and data transfer and a 3.5mm audio jack port which is a rarity these days. On the left side we got a dual SIM card slot and you can choose to use it for two SIM cards or you can use it for one SIM card and one SD memory card to expand the storage space with up to 512 gigabytes. If you're traveling a lot you might want to use two SIM cards so you can have a local SIM card and a SIM card from your home country. But if you're mostly using your phone at home you might want to use one SIM card and one SD card for more storage. It's up to you how you want to use it. At the right side we got volume buttons and a home button which is also a power on off button which I'm gonna press and hold now and it also has a fingerprint sensor. I like how Motorola put some effort into the little details like the startup animation and listen to this. Hello Moto. I absolutely love it. This is a standard Android setup so you'll need to enter your Google account. You could also set up the side mounted fingerprint sensor during the initial setup. It's fast and convenient and you can register up to 5 fingerprints but realistically only need 2. The phone doesn't have a face unlock but I didn't expect it and the fingerprint reader does the job just fine every single time. The phone has a pretty big 6.5 inch IPS LCD screen with a HD plus resolution of 1080 and 2400 pixels. It's not the brightest screen and it's not AMOLED screen but it's good enough for most things and it has an ambient light sensor. It has 120Hz refresh rate which makes everything look smooth and buttery and has a nice and vibrant colors. IPS hasn't got the best viewing angles in comparison to AMOLED but honestly most people won't notice the difference. The bezels are not very thick except for the bottom bezel which is around 7mm thick but that's expected at the budget price. The phone has a Widevine L1 certification so you can stream ultra HD content from services like Netflix and Google. The dual speakers are great with Dolby Atmos support for a more immersive sound experience. They produce clear highs and mids and they are loud enough to fill a room for most everyday use. They are not the best speakers you'll find on a smartphone but they are definitely good enough for the price. The phone has a dual camera system on the back with a 50 megapixels camera and 8 megapixels macro camera. The selfie camera is 16 megapixels. The main camera takes nice photos in daylight with good HDR performance and close-up detail. It also has optical image stabilization which is rare in budget phones and helps to reduce shakiness in low lights. I'm in Chester, England and I'm snapping a few photos in this gloomy British weather. 
The camera handles low light well thanks to the well optimized optical stabilization and AI processing which works fine and the photos come out beautifully detailed with the right colors up to around three times digital zoom. After that the cropping causes a visible drop in quality so my advice is not to overdo the zoom. Everything over around three times zoom look worse and worse so it would be better to come closer to the photographed object if possible. Let's compare the G54's camera to the iPhone's 11 and Xiaomi 13, one of the Xiaomi's flagships with the Leica lens system. The G54's camera is decent but it's not perfect. Occasionally the camera loses focus so you might need to tap on the display to ensure the focus point is locked correctly on the photographed object. The macro camera on the phone is actually pretty good. Most Android phones have useless macro cameras but this one does a pretty good job of capturing close objects even from a very short distance. The G54 can shoot HD 1080 pixels videos at 60 and 30 frames per second and the footage is very smooth and stable thanks to the optical image stabilization. It's comparable to the video footage from the iPhone 11 if not better. The iPhone captures more stable videos but the G54's footage looks good overall, even in low light. In a side-by-side -side comparison with the Xiaomi 13, the G54's image stabilization is pretty impressive considering that the Xiaomi is almost three times more expensive. The 8 megapixel selfie camera on the phone is sufficient for basic selfies in a bright light. The quality can drop in the low light but it's still good enough for a video phone call in HD. It's arguably the best camera system in a budget phone, beating out other options like the Ukitel, Redmi, Realme, Hatwav and Doji. It's even comparable to the OnePlus Nord CE3 Lite which I reviewed a few months back. The phone is powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 7020 chip which is good enough for most people's needs. It's not the fastest processor out there but it's good enough for everyday tasks and some light gaming. It gets 472,000 points on Antutu which is about three times less than the flagships like the Samsung S23 and the new iPhone 15 but it's still better than the popular phones like the Redmi Note 11 and 12. So the Moto G54 5G is a mid-range low tier phone but it's so certainly better priced than the competition. The phone comes in three variants with different RAM and storage options. I got the highest variant here with 8GB of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Now this is a budget phone but I would definitely recommend the highest variant if you are looking for the best possible performance and storage space. The phone comes with the Android 13 out of the box which is great. Motorola's My UX skin is known for being bloatware free but there are a few games and third party apps pre-installed here. This is still manageable compared to what Xiaomi and Realme phones have and you can uninstall these bloatware apps easily. I genuinely like the My UX system on this phone. It gives you several customization options and it's just elegant compared to other budget phones I've tested in the past few months. I really like it. Let's check out some processing power hungry games starting with the Asphalt 9 Legends, one of the best looking racing games for mobile platforms. I set the graphics to high and got around 50 frames per second even though the screen has a 120Hz refresh rate. There were some noticeable frame drops in a busy moment but overall the game looked fantastic for a budget phone. Next up is one of the most popular shooters, Call of Duty Mobile. The phone can handle medium graphics at a very high frame rate but in reality the frame rate caps around 60 fps. The game runs smoothly overall but there are occasional frame drops. I also tested Shadowgun Legends on medium graphics at 60 fps and the phone performed great, no noticeable frame drops and everything ran as smooth as butter. However, the phone did get a bit warm. One of the most popular mobile games PUBG runs on medium graphics settings but it's still very smooth. The amount of detail has been limited but it still looks good. I had no issues with lags or frame drops and everything went smoothly. Finally the most demanding game Genshin Impact. Obviously I had to lower the graphics settings and the frame rate to low but that allowed me to play the game without any major issues or frame drops. The phone did get noticeably warmer though. 
If you play demanding games like Genshin Impact, you'll have to lower the graphics settings or deal with some frame drops, and the phone can get a bit hot if you play games for extended periods of time. The Moto has a good network connectivity for the phone in this price range. It supports GSM, WCDMA, LTE and 5G bands, so it will work on most major carriers around the world. It also has Bluetooth 5.0, GPS, NFC for contactless payments and FM radio, so you can stay connected and entertained wherever you go. The phone has a massive 5000 mAh battery, which is a great feature to have in budget phone. It can easily last you 2-3 to three days on a single charge, even if you are a heavy user. It comes with the standard 20 watts fast charger, so you can top it up quickly when you need to. I personally recommend charging your phone from 20% to 80% to prolong the battery life, and don't leave it plugged in overnight. This applies to all mobile phones, and it will help your battery last longer. So the Moto G54 5G makes most lower mid-range phones look overpriced. It's the middle of Motorola's G-Series lineup and it has a great case to be the best value in the entire lineup. The G54 is a great value for money, especially for people on a budget who want to make the most out of their money. It's a good all-round phone with a good display, a decent camera system, a long-lasting battery and a decent performance. You can get the phone on Amazon and the official Motorola website. We've included the links in the video description or you can scan the QR code on the screen now to get straight to the Amazon store. We're not affiliated with Motorola in any way, I had to buy this phone for this review and all the tests and opinions expressed in this video are our own, so you could be sure it's a real thing. If you have any questions, requests or just want to say hi, leave us a comment below. We love hearing from you. Thanks for watching, catch you guys on the next one.